Hey guys, Mike here. So today we get to answer all your questions and stuff and you had some good ones about liquidity, the options market, uh, is there gonna be a recession and when if there's gonna be one, which I'll point out something more important than is there gonna be a recession. It's something you need to know before if that's the case. Uh, and then a few others as well. So as usual, we'll get right into it. Feel free to participate in the comments and answer these questions yourself. I always love reading the comments and getting you guys' feedback, okay? And so the first one, speaking of uh, options here, comes from Alejandro and he says, you mentioned some stocks use options to prop them up. Could you add some explanation on how that works? And I didn't say it props them up. What I said was you, you gotta look for, now Nvidia is the king of this, used to be Tesla. You're looking for these big whales, which are millions of dollars in call sweeps. And you want it to be call sweeps because call sweeps are when they say, hey, just fill the freaking order because they're expecting the big move, right? We're not gonna haggle about the price here. And so when you see that, that's what pushed NVIDIA up last week. It just bought millions and millions of call sweeps. What happens is the market maker is selling them. Then, of course, they have to hedge, right? Because they're trying to stay neutral here. And then so they'll have to buy the stock. And then what's even crazier, and the reason why I think it's gotten even more, not out of hand, but even more prevalent, is because around the world now you have sites like Cheddarflow and Usual Wells and a lot of others that literally send out alerts now right to millions of traders and people right and so then those people get the alerts say, oh i'm coming in boom and they start piling in some of them are buying the shares some of them are just buying the call options right and so it kind of compounds this big snowball effect and that's why you'll see like in video and everything was going red last week it was just rolling man just roaring up you used to see this on tesla a lot not so much anymore right you can tell because the way the stock's acting and stuff. And so, you know, you just look for, for stocks like that and, and, and things like that to happen, right? So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about call sweeps. Hope that helps. Now, the next one says, very informative. Thank you, Mike. In your own personal opinion, do you see any recession? And, and understand, first of all, nobody can predict a recession, but I like to at least know the numbers and, and if maybe there's one on the horizon. That's why I do this monthly video for the members every month to go over a bunch of different data points. But I will say this. When you look at this, here is the tightening of banks, right? These, these tightening standards, right? Are they loaning out or are they not? And when you see normally in a recession or going into recession, it's going up. Well, you know, right now it's going down, okay? It's not going up. And so that's an interesting indicator. You got different kind of these, right? From commercial industry, for small firms, medium-sized firms. When you go through, you can read the title at the top right there. But you can see over the last two quarters, it's coming down, right? I mean, the, the tightening is not happening. It's loosening, right? And you see going into any recession, it's tightening. This is usually what causes the recession because liquidity dries up, right? We can't get money. Uh, com companies can't get money. We can't get money as people, that kind of stuff. And you can see most of these have been going down, if not one quarter, two quarters, maybe three quarters, right? And so this is why I report this every day, Monday through Friday, about the financial conditions. Are they loosening? Are they tightening? All that good stuff. And so you're just not seeing that now okay and so we'll go through a couple more of these as you can see uh, that's domestic banks tightening standards this is net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for consumer loans excluding credit cards it's going down it was going up right um, when you come over and you look at net percentage of large domestic banks tightening standards for commercial and industrial loans to large and middle market firms last couple quarters this has been going down not going up and so this is what they mean when they say our financial condition is tightening or loosening and this kind of stuff. And so that's just one of many I like to look at. But then also it's the yield curve, right? We've got the deep, deepest yield curve ever. It hadn't uninverted because that crossed that white line, which is the zero line. That's when it uninverts, okay? And you see before the last three recessions at least, or four actually, it uninverted, right? So we hadn't even got to that point yet. And so when that happens, that's when usually things will start to kind of get really fun in the economy. And then also the thing to remember though is with the market, you're talking about the economy, the market usually tries to sell off before a recession. When it starts to see things roll over and tighten and things like that, they will sell this puppy down normally right before. And the only time it doesn't happen is usually when there's a black swan event or something. So, and, that, and they'll bottom usually in the recession. The dot-com bubble is weird because uh, it was the dot-com bubble, right? But any other time, you'll see them. They, they, they roll it over before the recession, officially hits, and you won't know it for a year if you had, had an official recession. And then it bottoms in the middle when everything's the worst, right? So they try to foresee the economic cycle turning over six to 12 months ahead of time. And then they like to buy in when things are really, they think it's worse, but they continue to get worse. 
and start rolling things up. So hopefully that makes sense. Now for the next one, and before we continue guys, please hit that thumbs up down there. It helps people find the video. I really appreciate that. And thank you for subscribing if you like these kind of videos. This one says, regarding your liquidity and NFCI indicators, talking about liquidity, do they lead or lag the equity markets and does the differential have a typical range? You can see right here, if you go to Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, this is free information for you to look up. There's the website. It comes out 8.30 a.m. every Wednesday. And you can see right here, it says points to lose your financial conditions, week ending April 5th. So it's usually one week behind, okay, on this one right here. So not a major discrepancy or big deal or whatever. And you can see the chart down here kind of shows you when it's going up, the market's crashing, when it's going down, uh, market's doing good. All right. And then, of course, this one takes into account right here. I get out of trading view. Um, and this one don't have too much of a lag to it, but it really is one of those things where it has the federal balance sheet, the treasury accounts balance and, and all that good stuff, the repo program. And so you can see uh, when it was coming down, what was happening, liquidity was drying up, the market was crashing. When it was going up, the market was loving life because they were pumping all kinds of money in. And really all you need is it either go up or trade sideways. So just don't be going you know, massively down. And the market will be okay, right? When it's going down, again, the market's not doing so good because liquidity is one of the top three things you need for a market to be going up. So just kind of keep that in mind. And that's why I post this. Usually every Wednesday, I update this every single Wednesday and just put still good, right? Because you're just looking for a big rollover. That's really the big thing. So hope that helps you on that one. Good question. Now, the next one comes about Max Payne. Uh, if the most calls are at 530, doesn't going above 530 cause the sellers more pain? Then it would cause the buyers and then max pain would be going above 530 more a question says i don't really understand the max pain theory and if you're unfamiliar with this the max pain theory is basically says on the expiry day of the options the price of the underlying index slash stocks moves towards a point that results in maximum loss pain to the highest number of options buyers alternatively it also means a minimum loss to options seller so you know I, I post this in the discord every morning and some people want the cues on there now so i do the spy and the cues i think this really really takes more effect when you have options expiration on a weekly especially in like a monthly option expiration right but you'll see up here these levels and so if you're a market maker or whoever you, you want to be in the middle somewhere not on these spikes right here because if you come all the way down people are getting paid come all the way up people are getting paid and remember the market makers are the ones selling this stuff right so um that's really the and it does it always work out absolutely not in a normal market it's actually pretty good in a crazy market uh, sometimes not uh, the best and i think zero dte is really affecting this more than anything else right now but a lot of times you'll see it. it's not gonna play out to the dot you can see max paint up there at 519 uh but a lot of times you'll be surprised how close it gets it surprises me sometimes and again, you know, you just look over here. I mean, you can go to SPY. Again, there's your max pain. You know, this is the date on there. It updates it Monday through Friday and stuff. And you can kind of come down and see how every day this is going to change. And it's going to change. It changes a lot more now because zero DTE is just so prevalent, which it was not before. Uh, you know, just the last couple of years have been crazy uh, with this one. So that's kind of changed things up a little bit. But, you know, some people still like to go uh, through it and go with that theory. Uh, now, next one says... Hello, Mike. Can you make more detailed videos on TMF and TLT? Also, what is if there's a crash coming in Q2, where will the money be invested in the market? Uh, well, if there's a crash, I mean, that's when TLT gets its biggest spike. Remember, it's, you know, three levels here you're looking at. Now, for those who don't know, TMF is the triple leverage ETF of TLT. OK, but we're not going to, you know, you can see that trend line where it keeps getting rejected. But again, we'll just stick with TLT here. And you can see, I mean, obviously, if you're in TNF, you know, TMF is, is down quite a bit, right? And as long as they keep pushing these rate cuts back, it most likely will continue to bleed out, right? And so that's really the big thing. Like TLT, as I've showed you before, and I'll show you in just a second, you know, there's three phases to this. And when you look at this, you can see you'll have them raising rates, right? And then they're going to pause. That's phase one where you'll see a pop in TLT, okay? And then there's going to be this, oh, they're cutting and you'll see the second pop in TLT. And then for the biggest pop, that's when it's going to be during the recession, right? When things are really bad, because the big money's just rolling into treasuries. That's usually what's going to happen, right? That's the safe haven to be in right there. And so that you can kind of see what's happening. So hopefully that makes a little more sense to you. Uh, that is the 08 crash right there. You can see that one. Uh, if we go back to when it was 2019 to 2020, right? Phase one, phase two, and then three. 
is the biggest pile, even though it was super short, right? Because it was a literally a 30 day crash, which is just absolutely insane. But when you go back over here, we can go also to the um, where we're at now, and you can see phase one was that pop, right? So now we're waiting on phase two, which is the actual cut, which keeps getting pushed back. And that's why this keeps selling back down. And again, there'll be an anticipation for this cut, right? The same way we got an anticipation for the pause and things like that. And so, you know, that's what you're waiting on right there. And then, of course, if there is a recession, that's when you get your biggest um, pop, as you've seen uh, in the last three times. Because, again, people just rush into safety. And the only thing safety when you're having a major crash is going to be uh, the government bonds. That or you just setting cash. So that's why people go into TLT. So hopefully that helps. All right. Next one here says, hey, Mike, uh, I have a question. Isn't it counterproductive of presidents to keep pumping money into the economy? When key is to slow it down, thanks, Mike. And yes, of course it is, but you got to remember this. This is what people forget. The Congress is the one that holds the purse. I don't care if Moses or whoever is the president. They can't just go make up their own bills, right? It has to be Congress. So the House and the Senate have to agree, and then they send a bill over to the president. Okay, that's the way it is. And so for people who, you know, they, they'll, they'll blame Biden or Trump or Obama or Bush or Clinton or whoever about the spending, they're just part of it, right? But they can't make the bills. And like this infrastructure bill, that was passed with Republicans and Democrats. That's the way it was, right? So it's so funny to me how you know, these parties and want to blame the other, but it's like, no, no, they're all, I mean, go back and look. Trump ran up the deficit like crazy. Obama did, Bush did, Clinton did, uh, Biden definitely has, right? They all do it, right? Because they're buying your votes. What do you want to do? Come to your district and say, by the way, we cut spending. All, all these projects you were going to get and have jobs, I took it away. Right now, like in Florida, we had an idiot uh, for representative came down here. Not my representative, but another one got caught on you know, live TV looking stupid because she was holding this rally, bragging to her constituents about all the jobs, the infrastructure jobs she was bringing to them. And then they said, oh, by the way, you voted against that bill. Why are you up here you know, acting like you did something? She's like, what? What, did I vote against that? Because you got to remember, a lot of times they don't even know what they're voting for. They just vote, have to vote the party line, no matter what, right? And so it's it's crazy how it works. But of course, I mean, you, would you vote for somebody who comes to you and says, by the way, we're taking jobs away from this district? Most people would not, all right? So they buy your votes, and they don't think more than, representatives don't think more than two years ahead. Uh, senators don't think more than six years ahead, right? They just spend this into oblivion, no matter who they are. That's, that's the way it works. You even heard Trump during his last rally in Washington, D.C. say, $600 checks, I wanted to send $2,000 checks out, right? So, but they wouldn't let him do that. I mean, you know, so that, that's just that's just how it is. They love to spend because it ain't their money. That's the way it works. So hopefully that helps you on that one. But yeah, it does not help with inflation. It, it, it doesn't help at all. So anyway, uh, last one here says uh, from Dr. Marcus, question uh, for Saturday's video, who controls or directs the SPY, NASDAQ, Russell, and Dow? What I mean is, who decides the dividend payouts? Who decides which stocks join or get kicked out of the ETF, et cetera? I never even thought about this, but I'm a nerd when it comes to stuff. But when it comes to the SPY, it is, you can look this up, it's State Street Global Advisors Trust. And then the sponsor's PDR, which I still couldn't figure out who that was. Uh, and then you'll have an administrator as well. But if you really want to see these, any of these, just look up their documents uh, that they file with the SEC. And you can see this thing goes into a lot of detail right uh, whatever you want to know and no matter what it is but yeah they control all this stuff right here this explains in detail what's going on and you can look in here for example like adjustments uh to the portfolio and we'll click on that for the heck of it. but state street obviously makes all those decisions as well and then when you come on the russell 2000 index which is a passive one uh, it's managed by FTCE Russell, which I believe is out of England, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, I'm kind of a nerd in some of that stuff. So I found it fascinating. I went through the SEC filing just because I was like, oh, okay, that's who controls this. Now that really matters. And the dividends, of course, are from the companies they own. They get a percentage. It's like anything. If you own 100 shares of Boeing and they pay a dividend, you get a certain amount of money, right? Well, the SPY, of course, buys all these different companies. So when those companies pay dividends, they collect the money up. And then it's distributed quarterly, right? And that's all decided by a big board and all that good stuff of trustees and stuff. So, yep, that's that's uh, what does that. So hopefully that answers your question right there. Uh, but it is interesting reading. So good questions this week. Yeah, just remember in the market, liquidity is king. The options market obviously has a huge effect as well. And so and I'll even show you a chart uh, coming up this week on like stock buybacks and, and the amount they have bought is insane. It's like 2000. It's, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy how much they buy back stock now, which of course most people don't realize 
helps them with their financials and they report earnings, right? And so that's how Apple, who basically is almost stalled in growth, right? Their EPS always beats for a reason. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with stock buybacks. They buy back a lot of stock. Um, so anyway, hope you guys got something out of it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll end up seeing you tomorrow to set up uh, the week and everything, which should be an interesting one. Please hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. And have a great one, guys.